hello guys this is me percy welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be showing you how i did these baby back ribs they were only nine dollars and 74 cents at walmart and what i'm going to be showing you um it's just like how it looked in the pack and next i am going to be showing you the seasonings that i did combine combine together to use um and i use onion powder garlic powder salt black pepper seasoning salt and paprika I also used yellow mustard as a binder, um, and I will, you know, definitely be showing everything that I did in this video. And I also used some light brown sugar, some honey as well, and I had some sweet baby Ray's honey barbecue sauce. Right here is just the back of the ribs um, that does have the directions on how to cook it, what temperature um, that you should have it on, and you know, how many hours, things of that nature. So I did just want to place that right there and let y'all see that. So for this next part right here, you're going to be seeing me take the paper towels and tap the ribs just so that I'm drying it off so that it's not wet. Um, especially for when I put the yellow mustard on as a binder. And I did flip these ribs over and I did also do the back side as well. Um, and I also was using paper towel to pull the membrane off because um, they say that, you know, paper towel is best to pull it off because it helps you grip it. But y'all, when I tell you I struggled so bad to get this membrane off of these ribs, like I couldn't figure out how to get it off or how to even begin to pull it up. I tried checking the other side of the ribs to see if that side would have been easier. But after some trial and error, I was um able to definitely, you know, get the membrane off of the back of it. It was just hard to like really be able to grip it and begin to try and pull it off but you will see where i pulled it off and you'll see like you know me show the membrane on the paper towel that i was able to get off i don't know how much of it i was supposed to get off but i know i, I did get like that top layer off of it and i was just very grateful to even be able to get that part off and this is where i finally got it off and I'm showing it right there. Right here, you're just going to see me um, kind of checking it to see if that's just another layer of the membrane that was supposed to come off. But I guess it's not. So right here, um, what you see me doing is basically just kind of cutting like little pieces off, like whether it's fat or just pieces of bone that was sticking out that may have been broken. So that's all you see me doing right here. So for this next part, um, I did go ahead and flip it over and trim some of the fat off of the front side and some other places on there too. That's what you see me doing right here.
I did go ahead and take some more paper towel and tap it dry just before I put the binder on there, which is the yellow mustard, as I've said previously in this video. And there's no um, right or wrong way to do it, really. It's just how you choose to do it. Um, but I did want to do like enough mustard in order to basically cover it and definitely make sure that the seasoning sticks to it. As I've seen and heard in previous videos, the mustard is just basically used to make sure that the seasoning actually stays on it because, you know, oftentimes when you don't use a binder what happens um the seasoning may not stick to the meat and you definitely do want your seasoning to stay on there so just in case you're also wondering because this was a question of my entrance as well but the only answer i got is when i found out in case you're wondering like if you actually taste the mustard <laughs> on the meat um, like after it's done, like you will not taste the mustard at all because that was one of my concerns. That was one thing that I did question myself as well. I'm like, well, you know, well, am I going to be able to taste the mustard? Because I don't think I want to taste mustard on my meat. But you will not taste the mustard on your meat. Um, and after I did put the binder on the back side, I did flip it over. And I did the front side as well. So I'm just mixing up my seasoning right here um, and I put just enough seasoning on mine. I did not want to season this meat too heavy um, because I didn't want it to kind of taste salty. It's already pork and I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes when I eat pork, my head does hurt. So I really don't even eat pork like that. I try to stay away from it. So I season mine very lightly. Um, with just enough to be able to actually taste the seasoning, but definitely, you know, season to your likings, um, however much flavor you want to use, whatever seasonings, how much, you know, seasoning to your taste, make sure that you are satisfied with it, but I was satisfied with the way I did mine, and this is how I wanted to do it. I flipped it over and of course I'm going to do the same thing to this side. I'm going to add my mustard as the binder and I'm going to make sure that I do have enough on there. I did go in and also add some more mustard because I didn't feel like that was enough. And I'm also going to season this side as well.
Okay, so now I am going to basically be putting it in this silver pan that I got from Dollar Tree. This was the biggest pan that I could have found um, that this rack of ribs was able to fit in. So I did put this in the oven. I preheated my oven, I believe, to about maybe 350 or 375. And... What I did um, was let this stay in the oven for about an hour and a half. And I let it cook with no foil on top at all. I just put it in the oven and let it cook just as it is. This is when I took it out of the oven after an hour and a half. And I know I did let this cook. Um, I know it was the temperature had to be between 350 and 375. Um, and this was only for like an hour and a half of it cooking. So that's just me rubbing the knife across it, you know, because of how crispy it was on the top. Because it definitely did look so delicious and it tasted a uh, whole lot better it was really good i love this and mind you this was in the oven also so now what i'm about to do is basically take my reynolds wrap aluminum foil and i'm going to place two long pieces onto my countertop and i did make sure that the both of them were about the same length because i'm going to be wrapping my um rack of ribs with this foil So next, what you're about to see me do is basically take my honey and drizzle the honey in like a zigzag pattern onto the aluminum foil. And next, what you're going to see me do is take my light brown sugar and I'm going to sprinkle some of that on top of the honey. And then I also took some cut up uh, pieces of butter and I place some of those pieces on top.
also you're gonna see me put the ribs on top of it but make sure that you put it meat side down make sure that the bones are facing up and i'm also gonna do the same thing to the back side of the ribs as well this is a very important step make sure that it is meat side down and I went back with the honey. I drizzled some of the honey on top and I also put some brown sugar on top of it as well. Wrapped it up and placed it back in my pan and back into the oven for another hour and a half. Right here, I'm just pouring some juice into it also. Um, I think this was white grape juice that I had. I did not have apple juice, so I did just go ahead and use a little bit of white grape juice. Um, and that worked for me as well. And I'm just going to continue to wrap it up, place it in my pan, and put it back in the oven. This is when I took the ribs out of the oven um, and they were done. It was so tender. It was so juicy. These ribs were not dry at all. And you will also get to see like how tender it really is. Like it was almost falling off of the bone. So right here is, you know, basically where you can see the ribs are about to fall off of the bone. I had a small pair of tongs and a big pair, so I was just basically trying to use those because, you know, I just took this out of the oven and I'm not trying to burn my hand. So I was just trying to get that foil to get wrapped up so I could put that in the trash can.
right here i'm just having my sweet baby raised barbecue sauce i did take my fingernail and i tore it open like that and i'm going to put some of that on top and um i have like a little i call it a little barbecue brush um it's like kind of it's like a little rubbery brush a lot of people may know what i'm talking about but i did use that to spread the barbecue sauce on top and then i just basically popped it back in the oven for like 15 minutes just to let the barbecue sauce kind of um set into the meat this is the finished look of my baby back barbecue ribs that were baked in the oven this was the first time that i ever done this and it was the best everything was good i was patient everything turned out to be i'm talking about real good and it was so beautiful and it was very tender and very juicy you can see the juices in the meat i kid you not but i do definitely want to thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching this video like comment share and subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit that bell for whenever i drop any videos thank you so much bye